Okay, so I've already entered the laboratory and put on a pair of gloves. I cleaned off the eyepieces with Windex and a paper towel. I turned on the microscope. I turned on the computer. I logged in with bioimaging, bioimaging. I loaded the SD card into the camera. I turned the camera on and I got the camera to communicate with the computer through EOS Utility 2. And I have my control panel up in remote live view window is now open. I made sure that the microscope was aligned in curler illumination as we looked at the other day. And I'm going to turn this down to the 5x objective and open up. I'm going to focus the field diaphragm. That's as good as it gets for the 5x objective. But 5x isn't affected very much by curler illumination. So that's fine. I'm going to open up this diaphragm and I'm going to make a slide with one of our with our first sample, which is Stentor, which is one of my favorite critters to look at. And I'm going to make a slide. So I have one slide here and I'm going to open the jar. And then once again, I'm going to reach down towards the bottom because the critters like to settle out down there and there's some food in the, in the jar for them. And I'm just going to put one drop. That's all I need. Well, it's a drop and a half. And then I'm going to put a microscope cover slip, a glass cover slip, which are very thin, so you have to be careful. And sometimes you end up with two that are stuck together. So you want to try to avoid that. The microscopes are designed to work with a specific thickness of glass. Well, I can tell that there's two here. Oh, there it goes. Okay, so I got it apart. And then, like I said, I put one edge of the cover slip on the glass slide, and then I just drop the cover slip onto the sample. And that helps to alleviate bubbles, although it's, it's pretty tough to avoid all of them. And then I'm going to put this on the microscope stage in the slide holder by moving the spring lever out and then sliding the slide into place and then releasing the lever. And this is our sample. I'm going to, looks like there's something on here. So I'm going to just find some material that I can focus on. And then I'm going to focus with the coarse focus first. and then with the fine, fine focus. And this looks like it's just food to me. We'll roam around and see if we can see any stentor on here. That looks like a air bubble. But here we go, Stentor. Um, I'm going to make, I made a folder already called Protozoa, which is right here. But I'm going to open up this folder, the Protozoa folder, and I'm going to go and make a new folder inside protozoa called stentor. I'm going to close this and now I'm going to open up this folder. I'm going to go to browse and I'm going to open up, I'm going to click on stentor and I'm going to open Stentor and press OK. 
So now we're saving these images to Stentor, and I'll just have to try to remember to make a new folder for each sample that we look at. So I'm going to take a photograph. This is with the 5x objective. Um, my shutter speed was very low. See? One sixth of a second. So I'm going to turn up the light so that we have a faster shutter speed. There, one twenty-fifth of a second, and you can see that it's changed the white balance. So I'm going to open the door. I'm going to select the eyedropper, make sure that this is checked, apply to shot images, and then I'm just going to click on some part of the image that doesn't have a, a specimen on it. And then I'm going to unclick the eyedropper and close this. Again, we're saving a RAW and a large JPEG, and we're saving both to the card into our folder that we just created called Stentor. Okay, take another shot here. And now I'm going to go up to 10x because this is pretty low mag. So let's swing the 10x objective in place. And Here he is under a little bit higher magnification. Try to center the critter a little bit. And I'm going to take a photo. Now it looks to me like it might be a little bit dark. So I'm going to use exposure compensation. I'm going to double click here. And I'm going to go, whoops, it jumped up for some reason to 2. I'm going to go back towards 0 here. Maybe I'll try this. So I'm going to, that's uh, 2 thirds of a stop. And of course, one full stop would be letting in twice as much light or twice the exposure. And now again at 10x, I just realized that my shutter speed again is low, 1 over 20. So I'm going to increase the power so that I can have a faster shutter speed. Whoops, let's go down a little bit. There, 1 over 125. I'm going to open the door. redo white balance and we're right back where we need to be. So now I have a fast shutter speed. Uh, I like this exposure a little bit better. I mean maybe that's a little too bright. We could go down another third of a stop. So above zero but open just one third of a stop. I'll try to center this guy again. And try to refocus. That looks good. So both at the 5x objective and at the 10x objective, the whole organism looks to be in focus. That's because there's a large depth of field, relatively large depth of field for 5 and 10. But let's try the 20x objective now. There we go. You can see the cilia here moving around. Whoops, let's see if I can get them in the center. Struggling. Okay. 
Now if I want to straighten him out a little bit, I can turn the camera a tiny bit here. And straighten, straighten the critter out a little bit. I can also fire the camera by pressing the space bar. That's another way of doing it. kind of changing his shape here. Now I'm going to show you guys how to take a video. To take a video you have to change the dial on the camera itself. We've been set here at aperture priority which is AV and I need to turn the dial all the way over until the icon that looks like a movie camera and I'm going to set that up on this camera here as well. Okay. When you set the camera on video, this button appears, and that's the button that starts and stops the video. I mentioned before that if you're taking a movie, you have to have an SD card in the camera. It's true that if we're just taking still images, we don't have to have a card in the camera, and we can just save the images to the folder on the desktop or to an external hard drive or thumb drive. All of those will work, but if you're taking a video, you need the card and the camera because the USB cable that connects the camera to the computer can't carry the information fast enough to record the video on the computer directly. You have to save it first to the card and then download the video to your, uh, to your computer. Okay, so let me see if we can recenter this guy a little bit. He kind of rounded up, and he's a little fatter, so he's not fitting on the screen quite as well. I'll turn the camera again to try to line him up a little bit. Like that, and now, and this red dot shows up when it's recording, and it begins counting um, how many seconds the video has been rolling. Okay, so I'm a little sad that he's not filling the screen. Of course, if we go down to 10x. Like this, he fills the screen. But now he's kind of small. Um, you could, of course, videotape or take still images of this organism and then crop it in Photoshop or Premiere, one of the video editing programs. Let's let it roll. Now let's go back to 20x. Okay, so now I'm going to stop the video by pressing this button and my counter disappears and the movie recording is stopped. And now let's go up to 40x. I'm going to switch this back over to still images. We get this 
data box that says warning, download recorded movie files. So I'm not going to download it yet. I'll, re re I'll uh, download it from the card later. I have to reopen the live view window here. And let's refocus at 20x. And now if we move to 40x and focus, you have to start to decide what part of the critter should be in focus because the depth of field is very shallow at 40x and the organisms, oh, here's another, a new friend. It came by. It's a cool structure there. Little kiss. See if I focus on one part, I'm trying to focus on this region right here. It's a little tough. Maybe there. And other parts, like this part over here, looks out of focus. And let's take a little movie of this. You also see the movie icon up here, the uh, movie camera icon. And I'll press start. And then I'm going to try to focus a little bit. OK, I'm going to stop there. I'm going to switch back over and take a couple more still images. I got the warning again. I'm going to cancel that. Reopen live view. Have to move this up a little bit. Whoops. I'm going to sh check my shutter to take a photograph. 1 over 15, that's too slow. So I'm going to move up the light again. Now it's all the way up, it's maxed out at 1 over 30, so that's still too slow. I'm going to first check my white balance, and then close the window, and now I'm going to go up in ISO. I'm going to try 400. 400 gives me 1 over 125, which is what I want. So I'm going to stop there. I'm going to take a photograph. There we go. OK, now if I want to go up to 100x, I have to swing out the 40, put the oil on, and then swing the 100x objective in place such that the oil fills the entire space between the cover slip on the top side of the cover slip and the glass of the microscope objective. Once I shoot it at 100x, I take the slide off and I throw it away. If I want to shoot at lower mags, um, I don't want to have to shoot through the oil. And you don't want to go from the 100x back to the 40 because you'll swing the 40x back into the oil. And now you'll have oil on the 40x objective, which wasn't built to work with oil. And you'll have blurry images. And you'll have to try to figure out how to get the oil off of the microscope objective, So, um, which is really uh, just wiping it off 
with a very fine spe special paper, lens paper, uh, that's designed for that purpose. So I put one drop of oil and I'm going to swing the 100x objective in place. And here's our critter still. I'm going to try to find a, you know, let's look at this again. Whoops. And here we have to pick what we want to be in focus because it's a very shallow depth of field and the entire subject can't be in focus in this particular case. So I'm trying to focus on this region right in here. Oh, I needed to check my shutter speed again. That's off, so I'm going to go up to 12,800. Oh, I don't need it to be quite that fast. Go to 1,600. It's one over 80. Let's go to 3,200. That's one over 160. So there's a lot to remember. You have to check the white balance every time if you're changing the power on the light source. You have to check your shutter speed as conditions change. You have to try to compose your, your image and then you have to pick, in this case, with a high magnification like 100x. You have to focus on what you think should be in focus, what you'd like to have in focus in the image. And even that is uh, a little bit difficult at times. Okay, and I'll make another movie. And we'll start the movie, then I'll make a few, whoops, didn't want to do that. Okay, so that was Stentor. I took that slide off of the microscope. I reset the microscope objective to 5x. I brought the power to the light source down so that my, eye, my shutter speed would be one, well, I wanted it to be 1 25th of a second, so let me bring it down to 1 25th. I'll recheck my white balance. And our ISO is again back to 100. The, the exposure compensation is set back to zero. And I've made a new folder for another organism called Euglena that I'd like to look at now. So any shots that we take now um, will be in the Euglena folder. And I'm going to take the cover off. I have a new microscope slide, and I'm using a new um, pipetter. I'm going to save this one for the stentor sample if we want to look at that again. So I'm going to go down to the bottom, suck up some of the stuff on the bottom, and then put the 
I think this pipetter has a hole in it. It's not sucking it up. Let me get another one. There, that one worked. It's one drop. Cover slip. And just set this on the microscope. And then we have to focus. And there they are, Euglena. So these guys are much smaller than the Stentor and obviously they're much faster. So they're moving around at a pretty good clip. This is at 5x, so I'll take a photograph. And there's our photograph of Euglena. It again looks a little dark, so I'm going to open up exposure compensation and open up a third of a stop like we did last time and take another photograph. There we go. And let's just go up to 10x. And focus. Let's see if we can find a spot where there's more of these. And this looks like a cool spot. Take a photo. Now, we might want to have a faster shutter speed here because we have the issue of motion blur. They're moving so fast. Oh, and when I moved up to 10x, our shutter went down to 1 over 25, so that was too slow. I have to remember every time. So I'm going to increase the amount of light, and let's go up to a higher shutter, 1 over 250, and recalibrate our white balance. Okay, it looks good. And take a photo. Take another one. All right, we can take a little movie. So I'll switch the camera to the movie mode. Here's movie. And I'll start the movie, which is now saving to the card on the camera. Okay, so that was one minute of movie recording, so we'll stop there. Let's move up to the 20x objective and refocus. And we'll make a little movie at 20x. Okay, I'll stop the movie and I'll set it back to still images. Cancel the warning. Go back to open the live view window. 
can check our shutter. One over a hundred now. I'm going to increase the light a little bit. Up, it's all the way up. So the maximum speed that we can shoot at this setting is one over 100. So I'd like to shoot faster than that because these critters are moving pretty quickly. So if we go to 200, the sensor will be twice as sensitive and the camera will now change the shutter speed to match the exposure that it had at 100, one over 100 for, one over 100 for the shutter speed and ISO 100. So if we go to 200, the camera is going to set the shutter speed at 1 over 200. So it will be this twice as sensitive, but half the shutter speed, or, or twice as fast if you want to think of it that way. See, 1 over 200. So if I change this to 400, this will change to 1 over 400. So we go to 400, and it changes to 1 over 400, which is a pretty fast shutter speed. So I can try shooting a few images here. So there's two types of blur that, that can happen here. One is blur because of motion. Uh, the other is blur because it's out of focus. So it's difficult sometimes to differentiate between those two phenomena. Now, if these guys are moving too fast, you can buy some stuff called Protoslow. And I have some. So Protoslow is also made by Carolina Biological. And as, it, as its name suggests, it slows down the protozoans. I don't know what's in it, but it's, it's kind of a, like molasses. It's, it's more viscous than water, and so it's harder for the protozoans like euglena that move really fast in water. It's harder for them to move in the protoslow. So I'm going to add one drop of euglena, and I'll add one drop of protoslow, which has a nice little squirt bottle. And let's see what the effect of that is. So we'll pull the 20, this slide off, and put one in that has protoslow on it. So you can see it slowed them right down to a stop. Maybe they don't like it very much because they kind of balled up. And there's fewer euglena because we've diluted it with the protoslow. Okay, but now let's see if we can get a shot. And now we can move up to 40x and get a little bit better view. And refocus. And we can make a little movie.
you can see that they have a flagella that they're using to move around. See a little whip-like tail. Okay, and then let's go up to 100x, so we need our oil. Just one drop. And swing the 100x in there. See if I can center this guy again. Oops. Oh, 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 oh. It's tough. It's very... Oh, you can see all the beautiful colors inside here. Although this guy's not moving very much. Okay, so if we want to get a picture of this, then we can go back to, we can turn off the video, and we can go back to still images. Our shutter speed is 1 over 20, so we have to increase our ISO. Now it's 160, that's not bad. We can take our shot there. He's pretty still. Okay, let me try to center it a little bit. I'm gonna put it on the first third, which often looks nice photographically to have it off center There's a nice, nice image there. Okay, today we talked a little bit about depth of field, which is the portion of the image that's in focus. And it turns out depth of field decreases as you increase the magnification. So something that might be fully in focus, the entire critter is in focus at 5x, at 100x, or maybe even at 40 or 20x, parts of the organism are in focus and parts of it are out of focus and then you have to select what objects in the image you want to have in focus. We sh 
we were able to take a few videos so the cameras can both take both still images and video images. We looked at protozoans, which are single-celled organisms that make up one of the six kingdoms of life. And we talked a little bit about using protoslow to slow the critters down. Okay, that's it for today, you guys. Have a nice evening. Talk to you later.